Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to 1905 Haupt Turnier in Barman. Today I want to show you the game where Akiba Rubinstein, who is 22 years old and he is on his first international tournament, uh, his ranking uh, actually is 2531 according to chess metrics and he plays as black and his opponent uh, is Milan Widmar. Milan Widmar is very interesting uh, master from Slovenia. At that time, of course, that was Austrian um, Hungary Empire. And later he was playing for Yugoslavia. Uh, however, according to his uh, nationality, he was uh, born in Ljubljana, so he is Slovenian. And he was 20 years old, so very young guy, and he actually was a student. He started the mechanical engineering in 1902. And in 1907, he actually graduated in University of Vienna. Then he got his doctor's degree in 1911. Uh, and then so as you see, he was very, very serious about his career. And then he was a professor at the University of Ljubljana and a member of Sloven Academy of Arts and Science. So uh, he was definitely not the uh, professional um, chess player, but one of the strongest uh, amateur player in the history. In 20s, in the year 20s, he was considered to be number four player in the world. So pretty, pretty strong um, uh, player. He was for many, many years in the top 10, a very dangerous opponent. However, here he is 20 years old. His ranking is considered to be 2423. Uh, okay, so very interesting uh, person. and. Uh, Usually in, during uh, his career, chess career, he was in the top five uh, places in many very strong tournaments. Sometimes he wins, usually he gets the second or third place. Uh, so definitely worth opponent. And uh, yeah, so he opened e4 as white. E6 uh, by Rubinstein, so we have French defense, D4 and D5, Knight C3, Knight F6 and Bishop on G5. And here D takes on E4. So we have burn variation of French defense, a Knight E4 and Bishop E7, of course, is the most popular move. And here Bishop on F6 is um, considered as the most popular move for white. And after uh, G takes on F6, Knight F3, F5 and Knight on C3 or on G3 uh, could be played. So that's the most popular line. And also Knight on F6 could be played, uh, but it's pretty boring variation where all the pieces are exchanged, the, the pawn structures are pretty uh, symmetrical with half open files uh, D and E. So not really an option for Widmar. He played Bishop on D3 and this is called, at least by him, uh, the Widmar Gambit. So let's see how Rubinstein played that. He took on e4 first, so now we have bishop on e7 and Rubinstein now take on f2 attacking the queen, so the queen are exchanged and here bishop on c7, knight on b2 and here uh, as the bishop is attacked bishop moved to e2. And here knight on c6, so attacking the uh, this pawn on d4, so uh, knight on f3 was played. And here, uh, if Rubinstein play, for example, um, castle, then he would get the problems with this knight. Look at this knight. This knight actually can't move anywhere because the this bishop making a really great job here. Uh, and after a4, Black would have to really, really uh, try to get this this knight somehow out, and it's it's gonna be attacked uh, very quickly and then e executed. So knight b4 would have to be played first. King d2 could be played, and now knight d5 attacking the bishop. Bishop on g3. 
And after bishop on d7, making a double attack on a4, c4 could be played, so attacking the, the knight, and for example, knight on b6. So as you see, it's a pretty complicated line. Um, this is still playable, however, white stand much better and black would have uh, really uh, problems to, to, you know, bring this, uh, this knight back. So definitely black has to be careful here. And this is why uh, in this position knight a4 was played by Rubinstein and this position was reached in the year 2000 where Nigel Short actually lost as black uh, to the 150 points lower rated opponent. So as you see this white um, uh, opening uh, is not considered as the strongest by the engine, but uh, it looks like it's pretty interesting um, uh, gambit for white. Uh, so uh, we have bishop on d6 here by Widmar controlling the f8. So black now can't castle on the king side. We have bishop on d7 and c4. So white gonna storm the center and try to attack on the queen side. Uh, we have the castle on the queen side, uh, probably the only move as uh, other options are considered as uh, really, really passive. And here we have, of course, a castle by Widmar. Knight on c3 attacking the bishop and bishop has to be moved on d3. It's forced because if the uh, bishop is defended, uh, then we would have bishop on e8 attacking the bishop. And after c5, we would have knight on e4. So double attack on the bishop. And if bishop is moved, then another pawn falls. So uh, white would actually lose the... Uh, the two pawns and the game for, for black would be very, very easy, uh, very easy development as well. So uh, no problems at all. This is why bishop on d3 was forced. And now we have bishop on e8 as planned. And here we have c5, f6 by Akiba Rubinstein. So giving the space for this bishop, this bishop now can be more active. And here we have bishop on c4, putting the pressure on e6. It's undefended pawn, so knight has to go on d5. Uh, and here the plan for white uh, could be probably uh, putting the pressure on e6 pawn, uh, but uh, Widmar had a different uh, opinion about that. He played a4, so attacking on the uh, queen side, attacking the king's position. And here we have bishop on g6. Uh, before putting bishop on g6, um, this actually is quite important because it controls the b1 square, so the rooks actually can't get here. Uh, but interesting would be uh, knight on a5 first and this bishop actually don't have a really great uh, square to go so if the bishop needs to be uh, on this diagonal then it has to go on uh, a2 and now this pawn can't be pushed anymore and only now bishop on g6 so uh, rook would have to go somewhere for example on a1 uh, and after rook uh, also from h to e8, the position would be as follow. Uh, black stands better, they have extra, uh, extra pawn of course, and position of white is totally, it's, it should be at least active, but it's not. Black defending really, really well, uh, nothing can be done here. Uh, so that would be the, the option for Akiba Rubinstein. However, he just play bishop on g6, controlling this b1 square. And here we have a5 uh, and a6 by Rubinstein. So Rubinstein definitely don't want to white to play a6. Uh, here we have rook f on a1. So now pressure on uh, e6 and we have rook h on e8. Rook on e2 by Widmar and bishop h5 by Rubinstein and pinning that knight probably it could be avoided by Widmar if before he play h3 and now could play g4. So this uh, rook on uh, e2 was um, possible after h3. That would be more accurate.
However, Widmar didn't care about this knight he play rook on b2. And here, uh, yes, this knight can be taken, but uh, Rubinstein play knight on e3, attacking this bishop. Uh, and here, knight on d2, defending the bishop. And here, knight f5 could be probably the strongest move for black. Uh, and after rook on b1, yes, white would have attack on the semi-open file. But now knight on a5 attacking the bishop, but also defending b7. So uh, actually also this bishop is attacked and this bishop actually don't have any spots to stay because this knight uh, very nice covers all the, all the squares. So uh, here of course g5 could be played and this bishop has nowhere to go. So has to be exchanged probably on uh, g3 not really great spot and uh, doubling the pawns on on g5 not really the great idea so rook a1 probably could be played but now knight on d6 c takes on d6 and now knight takes on c4 and after knight on c4 uh, bishop g6 defending this uh, crucial b1 square and white would have the problems to to you know continue the attack and uh, and that would be a pretty easy win for black uh, however that was not played and now is another interesting thing that uh, Widmar wrote in his book about this game that uh, knight on d4 could be played here knight on d4 and then after rook on b1 uh, rook on d7 could be played and yes indeed if rook on d7 then is of course um, bishop on a6 and winning for um, for for white however uh, Widmar didn't see bishop on g6 here attacking these rooks and that would be actually draw for 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 Widmar still okay uh, so rook on b7 bishop on b1 and now bishop on a6 and now we have some mating ideas but bishop d3 this is a really great resource so rook b8 and after king d7 we would have just perpetual check uh, and nothing can be done if black would like to go on c6 then they would probably lost so not an option here rook c7 that is the only way for the king here bishop b7 check and king has nowhere to go so a knight has to make a space for the king uh, of course knight knight is lost uh, king d4 the only move knight f3 king c3 and now bishop on e8 so taking the exchange back and in this position of course white is winning the material is equal but these two passed pawns of course are winning so that would be variation which Widmar missed uh, he didn't see this bishop on g6 here uh, that would be pretty complicated but it would let uh, white actually to draw the game uh, okay, but let's back to the main line. We have bishop on g6 by Rubinstein, so he want to control this important b1 square. And here we have rook on a3. P probably rook on e1 would be better, and after knight on d5, because uh, double attack on the, on the e6, and knight b3 probably would be the option now the of course the the d4 is under attack black stands better but don't really have like uh, easy easy move so this is a lot of um, the 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 calculations now and for both sides very complex game so far rook a3 however was played we have knight on f5 so very similar line but uh, but quite different Rook on b6 was played by Widmar with some tactical ideas uh, of taking the, the knight and taking the uh, a6 pawn. And here Rubinstein just take on d6, which, which was uh, totally okay. However, Widmar in his notes, what is interesting, he wrote that taking on d4 would be better. And then Widmar would have to play some move like huge resources like 
uh, rook on b3, rook a on b3. However, that's not true because after exchanging the rooks, uh, this sacrifice doesn't work because Rubinstein also could sacrifice the exchange. So that, uh, and that bishop would be eliminated. And after bishop on b7, king d7, uh, c takes on d6. Uh, knight would take uh, on a5, so defending the, the knights. And after exchanging, because this uh, bishop is now under attack, so after exchanging, uh, just knight takes on c6. Rook b7, king d6, and of course it's winning uh, position with uh, two extra pawns and minor piece. So black is winning here, so uh, Widmar uh, had the suggestion, of course he didn't have engine, so he shouldn't study this as well as we can do in 21st century, uh, but still. Uh, knight on d6 was played by Rubinstein, uh, pretty good move, and here if this knight is taken, then we would have just uh, rook takes on d6, and after uh, rook on, for example, c3, uh, king on c7, the game is better for black. Black would easily win with two extra pawns, so not problem at, at all. However, here bishop on a6 was played, so sacrifice by Widmar, and, and actually this is just effective a way to lose the game. Uh, however, there is only one move which is winning for black. So try to pause the video and try to find the last resource for Rubinstein, who is under the attack, but uh, not really strong attack. So it, it's all the time it's winning position for him, uh, even he is in the defensive stance, let's say. Uh, so I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea. So if you found knight on b8, then you are correct. This is the proper move. If uh, white decides c on d6, opening the uh, c file, then black of course can take the by the by the pawn. If if this happened, that is the what the white waiting for. It would be checkmate, so not an option. So a knight would have to take on a6, and after rook on c3, check king on b8 and everything is fine uh, black has extra peace and of course um, easy win if in this position uh, for example bishop on b7 there is much more calculations here but still knight on b7 and here rook a on b3 so getting back now the material but, but now knight on a5 attacking this rook uh, so rook on b8 check, king c7, and now this rook is attacked, this rook is attacked twice, so rook has to take on d8, rook takes on d8, and um, it's still winning for black as the, it's the extra piece. And also bishop on e2, that is the, the option for, for white, probably the best one with the plan on a6. So knight e4 first, trying to exchange the uh, knights, but a6, b takes on e a6, bishop takes on a6 with check, and after knight takes on a6, rook a2 takes on a6, we would have rook on e7. And now the king can just escape from, uh, from this attacking uh, area. So knight on c4 could be played, king d7, but now uh, knight on a5. And yes, a uh, king can go, of course, to um, uh, e8 and uh, just sacrifice the exchange is okay, still winning for black. Uh, but if black don't want to do that, then rook c8, knight c6, rook e8, uh, and now we would have rook b7. Uh, actually, white don't have much options. Rook c7, king c7, knight d5, and the same situation. Black just has extra, extra piece, and of course, winning situation. So yeah, definitely knight on b8 was the winning move. Congratulations if you found it. Uh, however, Rubinstein didn't find it. 
he play knight on a7 and that's actually losing move so big drama uh, in the barman tournament uh, rubinstein who really outplay vidmar in this game uh, vidmar couldn't do anything it looks like he's attacking but he was totally stuck totally blocked and uh, couldn't do anything now uh, rubinstein just blunder whole game by one move so c takes on d6 we have rook on d7 and here rook on b7 rook on b7 so uh rook takes on b7 and now we have rook on b3 so this rook is pinned and of course it can be defended the knight can defend the bishop can defend because uh, this knight now doing the great job this rook also can defend because of the of the pawn so a uh, dramatic situation we have still knight c6 by rubinstein rook on b7 of course and now some discoveries is coming knight b8 there is no good discovery but good enough is rook on c7 check king d8 and now we have bishop on b5 attacking the rook and um, if the rook is uh, is taken and then of course is a very easy win for white white can just uh, bring the pawn to the uh, promotion so e5 as the last chance for rubinstein uh, but vidmar play d5 so not exchanging anything e4 by rubinstein but here we have knight b3 knight b3 with the plan of just bringing the the knight to e6 and uh, almost checkmating that would be checkmate so uh, black would have to exchange the the rook for this knight and of course that would be a very easy win for white so bishop f5 preventing that and now we have knight on d4 bishop on c8 so now this uh, move is not possible the problem is bishop on e8 and in this position Akiba Rubinstein actually resign the game there is nothing uh, he can do if the king takes uh, on e8 then of course uh, the knight is also lost so um, there is no point of playing that game so in this position actually Akiba Rubinstein resign his game and um, and yeah very very well played uh, game by Rubinstein but still it's possible to blunder at the completely winning position and so have to be very very careful uh, this tournament was really great for Akiba Rubinstein if he managed to win uh, or draw this game he would be you know sole leader in this um, tournament uh, he won that tournament but exec for with Olgich Duras okay so that being said uh, thanks for watching uh, if you like this video of course press like if you don't like press unlike and always feel free to comment i really enjoy the comments and if you don't want to miss uh, other games by akiba rubinstein of course subscribe and now thanks for watching and see you in the next one